I think that's fundamentally a Christian concept is that if if you want to be a good Christian, then in, in a sense, you need to be a good Christian philosopher and not that you have to be a lofty ivory tower, you know, thinker or anything like that. It's just like, like Steve saying is take these opportunities to seek out clarification and use the Bible. Even if you don't, if, even if you think the Bible is just a bunch of sheep herders writing some stuff down and none of it's really relevant, I don't see how you could disregard it's, it's, tenets of wisdom because it does have such wow, high yeah. levels of tenets of wisdom. So if you, if you do consider yourself a person who loves being wise and loves seeking out clarity and, and understanding, then the Bible is one of the best books ever written on the topic. I think it's the best. And, and I think that, uh, that leads us into my final point, which flows right out of that growing in wisdom, but grow as a believer, grow as a believer. Back to that Philippians 1 passage you talked about. Um, let, let your love abound more and more in all knowledge and, and, and depth of perception. So more and more, this grow in it. The, the Christian life was not meant to be something where you have this, this experience going from darkness to light. And then you just kind of endure the rest of your life until you get to heaven. No, it's an exciting experience, relationship with God that's a growth experience. And I'm still, I don't, I don't know with you, but with me, I'll read the, I mean, I've read the Bible for how many years now? I mean, this was 1973 when I made a commitment to Christ. And now I still, I'll be reading the Bible and think, wow, I've just never seen it like this before. Sure. It's just wonderful. So I have a devotion with my wife. I have my personal times uh, with the Lord. These are personal devotions where it, it, if, if you're just kind of doing the hunt and peck method where you just put your, your finger on a verse and read it, go beyond that. You need context. Read through the Bible this year. Mm -hmm. uh, read through the New Testament a couple of times first if you've never done that. Read the Gospels. Read things in their context and understand them. And that'll answer so many of the doubts and questions you have that are thrown at you because many of the things that skeptics throw at us are really scriptures taken out of context. Yeah. It's one verse that looks weird in it without a context, yeah. but then in the context of the whole Bible, you say, oh, I understand why God does things like this. Get into the Bible. Get into prayer. Personally, I mean, I'm at a point in my spiritual life where I'm driving along the car and I'm talking to God. The Bible talks about pray without ceasing. Uh, and, and I'm just kind of continually in an attitude of prayer about things. Mm -hmm. And I'll just break out into, I'll be talking to one of my sons about something. I'll say, man, we need to pray about that. Hey, God, please, please help us to get understanding of this. I'll just break out into a prayer. It's just a very natural part of my life. But I'm continuing to grow. Don't just go to a big church gathering. You need to be involved in some type of small group experience where you're growing together with other people. It's almost like an Alcoholics Anonymous group. I mean, these people that are getting off alcohol, trying to be sober, they get together in small groups. You see them meeting in churches and places all over the community because they know they need each other. Mm -hmm. That's what the small group experience in a church is supposed to be. If the one you're in isn't working like that, you're not really developing relationships, you don't really like the people that are in the group, go find another group. There's thousands of them around. Find something to where you're in a group of people that hit it off and you can keep each other accountable and growing. So grow 